just give me uh, perfect perfect meeting is now live okay uh so with that said uh we'll start off uh with a call to order it's a 707 so you can stand uh pledge of allegiance okay i pledge allegiance to the flag flag of the united United states States of america America. and to the republic Republic for which it stands stands. god indivisible with liberty for all Perfect. Okay. Uh, with that uh, accomplished, we have the public portion. Um, I see that we have a, a Eugene uh, Patagas. Um, sir, I've uh, I'll, I'll allowed you to join our Conservation Commission meeting. I don't see a video of you, but was there um, something you wanted to speak to the commission about? Uh, no, there was not. Oh. Okay. Well, um, you're welcome to uh, um, uh, uh, watch our meeting. Um, it'll also be streaming on YouTube. Um, so we'll move on to the uh, minutes, uh, approval of minutes from August 3rd. Uh, can I hear a motion to approve those? Made by Tom. I'll make a motion. Seconded by Jim. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, natural resource manager report. Teresa, anything generally? Garden committee, litter committee? Um, yeah, the invasive plants, the mile a minute, the remove more of that at Trombetta Woods, and Trombetta Woods seems to be in pretty good shape there. Yeah. Um, so I don't think any of that stuff went to seed there, which is good. Stilt grass is a big deal right now. It's an annual, and um, the whole deal with stilt grass is to cut it uh, before it goes to seed. And stilt grass is one of those, is, it's unusual in that it really gets tracked up and down the trails quite a bit on hikers treads. Um, it just puts out tons and tons of seeds. And for some reason they stick on the bottom of boots and you can see up and down the trails on the stilt grass. I obviously can't deal with all the stilt grass in Chilton. So I just uh, focus on Birch Bank and then going into Indian Well on the Pagasset when I'm when I'm hiking like with my dog I'll just stop and pull it if you know if there's a little patch of it coming up but um, at Birch Bank it's mostly down low and uh, I hit it with a string trimmer at ground level right now um, and that keeps it from going to seed you have to do that for for years okay. um, the gardens uh, we have a garden soiree that is scheduled for September which is a lot of fun all the members from either garden are um, invited and people make dishes with their, um, from their garden, ingredients from their gardens. And it's a lot of fun. A um, lot of inspections. Uh, the thing with community gardens, this time of year is they can look really seedy. If you've gone to other community gardens and they can, they, they can look pretty ratty. So we do try to stay on top of everyone and we do inspections and we do an inspection tomorrow. Um, and, you know, contact people if their garden plot is getting a little over, overgrown. Um, we did have some issues and continue to have some issues at the garden with unauthorized people coming in. Sometimes there are people that just, you know, open the deer fence and start wandering through the plots. And we do have, uh, signs in every one of the gates that say authorized personnel only and people will still come in. We had a problem at Long Hill with um, some kids coming in in cars at dusk and refusing to leave. It was the same car. Multiple gardeners were taking pictures and asking asking them to leave and they weren't leaving. And finally we had the police go and, because we got the license plate, have them go talk to them and and so forth. Um, So that was good. Uh, And we're probably gonna have to change the the lock. So it's security issues Um, and continuous with, with security um a lot going on right now this month we had we had a lot of dirt bike activity at um birch bank and indian uh indian well again and tamor quite a bit more this summer so i'm resurrecting the deer cameras and purchased one cheap one as well on i'm experimenting with because it's solar powered and the, the card will rewrite instead of um just stopping because it's full i'm kind of experimenting with that and i don't want to get into too many details um in the public because it's a security issue but 
Um, I, I, there's a lot going on with that. Um, and a real game changer was, and I can't believe I didn't know this before, but I, I purchased a telescoping ladder. It's eight and a half feet and I can easily telescope it down and it goes right into my car. And that's a real game changer for me because before this, um, when we had deer cams and stuff, it, it was it was really a hardship for anybody to service these things because the batteries would run out and the, the card would fill up. And so you had to constantly go and check these and they're up high in a tree and I couldn't get a ladder in my little tiny car. So I couldn't do it and it relied on trails volunteers and they just didn't want to. And so these cameras have been sitting around some, a couple of the cameras were stolen or lost, but we still have a couple. Um, so uh, it's easy now. I can put this ladder in my car. I can tie it to a backpack and I can go down the trails and up the hills and put it anywhere I want now. So cool. it's working really well. Perfect. Yeah. Um, the other thing I started with the trails committee is a to-do list on uh, Google docs. Tom, you're probably familiar with that. Do the checklist yep. thing sure. and I'm in maintaining it. So when somebody says, you know, there's a, tree down and, and then somebody says well i cut it and then checking it off and um that's a new thing and i, I think that's going to work well we've used uh the uh, the google tasks uh in addition to google docs um with tasks it's an easy uh um outline and you can just uh, check the bubble box and it just scratches it off the list kind of thing so. yeah it's just, this has the thing the google docs has for um has the same kind of thing it's a bullet point but it's a box and you check it off and it crosses everything out. Yeah. 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 As a task, it's, a, it's like an easy app that you can add to your phone and just pop it up and see what you're doing or what's next or shift things around. Anyway, you, you got to cover that? Yeah. Can you share the tasks? Yeah. With, okay. Yeah. For with, I think they call it collaborators or something. You the litter have, ooh, committee, ooh, litter yeah. committee's, well, we've had a lot of cleanups lately over the summer. There's um, the Shelton cleanup project group has been continuing to do cleanups. And then we have, you know, some various corporations and so forth. And I just really, I brought it up. I noticed that I was already um, just about out of bags and gloves, which is unusual for me to go through so many in one year. And it's a lot of it was the Shelton cleanup project. Mm -hmm. They've been doing a lot of cleanups. That's good. Yep. And I think that's it. Okay. Uh, Bill Dyer uh, with the newly formed Trails Committee. Bill, I muted the box where you're on video and I think you read you joined a second time. So hopefully we can hear you. No, he's, he's, his microphone is... Uh, that's the... I, I have, I, he's all set, Jim. I muted the microphone for where he is uh, video displayed, but he joined with his phone so he could actually oh. be heard. So... Does this work? Yes, it yeah. does. <laughs> oh, good. Well, then I, I don't need the phone. Get rid of that. All right. If, if the phone worked. Oh, good. All right. Great. Um, well, yeah, the, the big news for us, I guess, is that we're now an ad hoc committee versus whatever we were before. But in any case, it means... We have to, if we have new members, we have to get them approved by the uh, Board of Aldermen. So. But hopefully, I can get rid of that. Okay, I think we're done with it. Um, so, uh, we had two work parties, we had uh, a variety. Uh, things to um, get our barn up and working. And um, we did review the, the to-do list, the trails, cameras. Um, and we have a Boy Scout interested in doing a project with the land trust property off of, um, off of uh, Mohegan Road. Ed, are you still there? Uh, I don't see Ed having joined yet, but uh, I think, Bill, if you mute the speaker on your 
uh, computer will reduce the feedback that we're getting. Okay. I finally got everything up and op operating, and now it's terrible. So <laughs> Unmute. Is that good? Or can anybody hear me? I don't know. Anyway, uh, we do have two work parties scheduled for the 9th, for the 10th and 24th of this month. And Can I ask a question, Bill? Sure. Is I have on a calendar November 4th as an event regarding the anniversary of the rec path. Is that still something that is, I don't remember why I wrote it down, but I saw it on my calendar. It's the 10 year anniversary of the rec path and it's November 4th. Are we, is it trails or conservation doing something in celebration of that or was that something I made up. <laughs> no, you didn't make it up. It was, we, I think it got kind of the, we had the barn celebration and that kind of took, took care of the it. focus. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Bill? You're, uh, this, uh, we're, we're not able to hear you, Bill. Um, Come in over. Yeah. Okay, Roger now. Yeah, I think uh, understood, Tom. Let's see um, if Tom has any comments before he has to leave. Yeah, and do you, anything you want to add before you want to go, Tom? No, no, I'm all set and I apologize I have to leave, but just a bunch of me two other meetings tonight. Yeah, so I'll, sure. I'll, I'll catch up to everybody. Well done. Thanks so all much. Right. Bye, Tom. And Tom, Tom H., thank you for the referral. So uh, I'll keep yeah. you in the loop on that. Very good. Yeah, Priscilla will be with you on that. Thanks. All right. um, okay. Um, well, while Bill's uh, sorting himself out um, and Ed McCurry is not here, uh, I don't think that there's any updates to the Shelton Canal locks that I'm aware of. Um, well, I can update you a little bit on that. Go ahead, Jim. It's just that, and we'll have to hear it from Ed, I guess, directly. But for right now, the project is on hold. Okay. All right. um, no progress is being made at made this time. At this time. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to a review of uh, Epigo. We got Bill Dyer coming back in here. So let's see how this works. Um, uh, while he's getting configured, I'll just uh, talk about some of the uh, PNZ and inland wetlands applications. Um, okay. The uh, ZBA has uh, a request before it on 22 Maggie Lane. That's off of uh, Buddington Road. Um, they want to change their rear setback to 25 to 20 feet uh, for a pool. Um, so the request is a 20 foot setback instead of a 30 foot that's required. Um, the hearing is set for September 30th and because the city of Shelton right. open space is abutting. God damn it. Uh, I'm going to do a share screen. Does that ZB, does that mean that it's an encroachment into the open space? Uh, it is not, which is what surprises me. Uh, can everybody see my screen here? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, this is uh, Bunnington Road, and Maggie Lane comes off of that. Uh, if I were to pull up some layering, um, there's a house here off of Maggie Lane, and if I am to look at it and the... Uh, oh, damn it. So the, here's the request that came to us uh, for an in-ground pool, asking the city for a variance on the rear setback from 30 feet to 20 feet. Uh, and looking at this on the city's GIS, um, this house here is 22 Maggie Lane. 
So the rear setback would not be to city open space. It would be to this other property owner. All right, we have um, no issue. How about the so, how about the yeah. south side there? Um, the request was only for a rear setback, not not on the side. But this is the city open space that was dedicated from that subdivision. So okay, no issue. No, no issue because it's a rear setback request. The only thing I would say, given our our history of uh, of people making such requests, that um, you know the open space be properly um, marked or marked so that are delineated so that it's um, not infringed upon. Uh, Teresa made some comment to me via the email when she alerted me to this of concern that. Sometimes if there's trees nearby that would be overhanging, uh, then eventually they become concerned about the tree being a hazard. But um, I don't I don't really see that as being the case here. Um, you know, we can't be we have to pick our battles. I, I'm not I don't concern I don't concern ourselves with trees that are right on the broad property line okay. or on the borderline. You know, we have. You know, we, we live in a jungle. Connecticut's a jungle. I hate to tell you that. So, uh, uh, well, what, one thing what will happen is uh, they'll want the city to pay to cut those trees down. And that becomes an issue with the tree warden. And cross that bridge when we come That's to fine. it. Maybe, exactly I guess. right. Yeah. That's right. Um, but in terms of the. And yeah, it's with the tree warden. Let the tree warden do it. That's what his job is. You know, if that time comes. <laughs> uh, I, I would. You know, you know how the tree warden works. So I would entertain a motion that we um, see no issue with the rear lot va variance because it does not abut city property. Correct. However, given historical activity of reduced variance in adjacency with city open space, we would want to see the property border be clearly delineated so that city property is not infringed upon. Okay, fair enough. All right. So if, uh, if I'm, I can make a motion as a chair, even though I'm a chair. So second to that from Sherry, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So Teresa, if you could write while that we're on the While we're on the subject of encroachments, how we sit with their uh, last meeting encroachment issues. We send well, letters out. I, I haven't got to that one yet. I have a different one I'm working on off of... Um, Willing, Wellington, Wellington. Uh, it's along the Spencer Trail. Let's see that, Tommy. Uh, let me. Um, What's the issue, it? Teresa? It, it's. Yeah, Bill's familiar with it. We we um, it's right along the Pagasa Trail. It's also along the Eversource. What's going on with the Eversource project? But new owners came in. Um, and a lot of, there, there had been some trees, some evergreen trees there that I believe Eversource cut. And so the new property owners surveyed their boundary. They have actual survey stakes in and then did plantings of sod and ornamental grasses over the boundary, um, right yeah. alongside the trail. So which parcel are we talking about on the screen? Um, go down, okay, it's right there. Okay. So this is Wellington. Yeah. It, it's, right. it's the one right next to the, to the uh, open space. Yeah. That's it. This one? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so all those evergreen trees that you see there, were those were cut. The, the, the Eversource's easement actually goes onto their property, and they came through and cut all of those. Okay. That was previous. And then we had new owners. And so they over onto the open space and you can see that road that's actually the hiking trail right okay and so yeah. they went over that they staked the line um with survey stakes and then they went over the line and put a bunch of saw and ornamental grasses and so you know grass you know grass that would be bowed plus ornamental grasses like big those six foot tall yeah ornamental grasses. On, on on the on the on, uh, well into itself. city open space way well into city open space on the trail itself? No, not but like right next to the trail. Right next to it. Yeah. So let me understand. You, you ever source came in, cleared some trees that was within their easement, even though that easement is on their private property. Mm -hmm. That made kind of a clearing looking out towards this utility quarter, which they apparently did not like. Yeah, and then uh, there's property new owners. Changed, new owners. 
New owners. And then. then they the the property was staked by or surveyed by the new owners. Right. And so they clearly knew the delineation legally of where their property line ended. Absolutely. And then they planted some ornamental grasses um, on okay. city property. So that's easy. Let's write a letter. Just I already okay. okay. What what have you done? Where's the letter? I already sent them a letter a uh, few months back. I you need to DC the commission when you send a letter. If you do that, okay. Please, that that's kind of important that you do that, Dad, myself, or whoever is interested, especially Ed, because I um, often discuss things with Ed directly on stuff like that. Uh, what has the response been since your letter, Teresa? I was thinking the same thing. I did not get a direct response, but. Mark Valero had been out there from the Trails Committee. And I guess the, the man who lives there speaks Polish. And they have put up, I, I had recommended in my letter that they might consider putting up a fence, you know, and, you know if they wanted privacy. And uh, I understand that they did put up a fence and I, I need to get out there and, and see what's going on. And certainly, if they put up a structure of a fence, we would hope that it would be put on their property and not right. city property. And I think, I mean, they surveyed it and, and so forth. But that's, yeah, that's. Now, the, when the when we're making an assumption, was it was it surveyed by like a licensed surveyor or was it just they went out there and figured, oh, this is where it is and stake it? It looked like a licensed surveyor. OK, don't, don't yeah. use the word. Listen, in our conversations, if you don't know it's done by a licensed surveyor, do not say it's surveyed. OK, because that leads to totally different implications. Legal ramifications, yeah. All right. well, these, these were standard looking survey markers. Okay, that's good. So we probably surveyed, I'm sure yeah. it was. Yeah. But not verified that it has been done. So. Yeah. So. Um, okay, uh, so I guess right now for this case, are we looking that they remove these ornamental grasses type plantings or? Yes, I did, I did specify okay. that, that they should be, the, and it was wasn't just the ornamental grasses; it was sod, like for that would be mowed mm. oh, into the God, open space yeah. as well. And that was in between. So the ornamental grasses were spaced, and in between that was sod. Oh, okay. And that was in the open space. Um, so I I did instruct the property owner to to move that off of the open space. Okay. Okay. All righty. Let's see what happens. Uh, uh, anything uh, uh, else in terms of well, did we did we vote on the uh, the ZBA setback? Did we? I forget where we left on that. Yes, we did, we did. move a motion on that, so we're all set with that one. Okay. Um, What's next on the agenda? Uh, well, I just want to give Bill an opportunity. I don't know if Bill, you've corrected your audio. Yeah, I okay, think good. so. Oh, I'm back on my phone. I don't know. Anyway. Sounds good, one, Bill. Sounds good. The one, um, although Ed, I, I think it's kind of interesting that there's a Boy Scout wanting to create a trail on the land trust property, which is next to the parcel that we just bought, um, essentially at the corner of um, Mohegan and Booth Hill. Oh, so the land trust actually owns like nine, eight, two parcels that add up to about nine acres. The aquarium right next to theirs and next to the parcel that we just, the city just bought is 11 acres. And so obviously the land trust can have the Boy Scout just do it, but. Not sure it, where a trail goes from and to there. It goes, it would, you'd have to park right on, um, Mohegan or pull off Mohegan mm. uh, the trail um, I wonder if I can yeah if you can do a screen share of that time it's just the area between Trumbull and uh, Booth Hill on Mohegan okay yeah it's the corner there where what's this where does it go to and from I don't understand the trail well it'd be a loop it basically it would go oh. up there's a there's a paper road, but it, there's nothing there. So, but as yeah. they say, the land trust owns like nine acres in right. two so parcels. 
I've got the screen share up, Bill. I'm not sure if you're able to see it on your phone, but yes, uh, uh, yeah. between Moose Hill Road, Mohegan, there's a land trust owning about uh, just under six acres, and then another parcel of just under three acres. Right. And then the Aquarian has the 11.3 acres. And then this parcel, which the city website still shows as Sound Home Builders, was um, the piece purchased by the city. One and a quarter acre, right. Correct, yeah. So uh, there is a paper street, as you reference. That goes between Booth Hill um, and coming out on Moose Hill Road in Monroe. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so he's going to make that a trail, Bill? I haven't talked to Joe about it or, or the Boy Scout. I mean, basically, Joe uh, contacted us and said, we've got a Boy Scout interested in doing this. We just thought we you ought to know. So, oh. I mean, it really is sort of not an action for us, but it turns out that the trails committee ends up doing a lot of maintenance uh, because the land trust doesn't have people to do it. So there's sort of a, we have at least a slight interest in it. And of course it could end up going on to the one and a quarter acre parcel that we just, that the city just bought. So. Well, if it's a land trust situation, I think we'll leave it to land trust. If it's, if it ends up coming on to city open space, then I think we can get more interested. Okay. Again, I just wanted everybody to know about this. It, yeah. sure. Nothing's going to happen until sure. like March or April. Anyway, nobody builds sure. trail, you know, and they might flag it out now, but you want to do it after the storm. So right. anyway, okay. one, one thing I would say, Bill, is that if you hear about any success that this scout has in obtaining access to the, Aquarian property. Um, um, we would be interested in how that was obtained because we're trying to do that over near the uh, Trombetta uh, connection. That's true. Right. But well, but that's crossing a stream. This, but obviously the Far Mill River goes right through that Aquarian property. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else with uh, trails? Um, well, it, you know, the Board of Aldermen did um, send a letter to the Siding Council about the um, replacement of the towers. And mm -hmm. um, we did just receive, I haven't even read it yet, but we received a letter from the Siding Council to the um, Eversource saying, please take advantage, you know, res respond to all the requests that uh, the city of Shelton has raised about issues. So we haven't heard from ever source but the siding council basically said hey we got all this info from the mayor the alderman the trails committee good. you have to respond to it so yeah good, good. okay very positive yep. good all right um so uh, uh returning back to some of the uh, pnz and applications uh just i put it on there for reference the gamble property in long hill avenue the conservation commission had sent that letter endorsing the open space dedication and the public hearing was held um i haven't heard of any approvals but it seems like that is going to go in alignment with what we had requested um and then uh there was a question about the uh, subdivision on armstrong road um the pnz had held their meeting previous to our conservation and they did accept the fee in lieu of payment as part of their decision uh, as you recall, there was no real open space dedication. We wanted up against the Route 8 corridor there. Um, and uh, I don't have anything for quality of life or open space trust account. Um, so I guess that moves on to comments by members. So um, I'll go first. Um, I had a good week this past week. Went to uh, um, a uh, Oregon and uh, enjoyed the Pacific coast out there. Um, beautiful place. Uh, it was a golf trip and um, a multi, well, probably a billionaire, but uh, several thousand acres along the Pacific coast and uh, built five golf courses and um, did it very thoughtfully. Um, the clubhouses are not on the ocean. They are set away back and into the hillside. It is walking only, there are no carts. Um, you know, the recycling Five program and, without carts, yeah. Uh, Bandon Dunes, uh, Oregon. Well, um, I knew one, I didn't realize all of them were that way. Five, yeah. wow, yep. Yeah. Uh, we did 36 on 
Monday, 36 on Tuesday, and 18 on Wednesday. So with caddies. No. Wow. <laughs> Push carts, pull carts. We, we had we had pull carts, but oh um, god, yeah. we you. were fortunate to have good weather. But it was it was pretty rough. I got to admit, you're doing yeah. 36 holes a day, two days in a row. And, uh, um, but it was good and um, enjoyed. So I enjoyed Oregon. And, oh my uh, god, and uh, and, a, and a quick trip to Colorado too. So enjoyed the Colorado River and a little uh, rafting in hot springs. So that was my week. <laughs> and I got to visit my mom on a layover too. So in Chicago. Oh, that's nice. nice. Good job. Yeah. yeah. Sherry, you're next in the uh um the boxes. What's up? Well, uh, my husband and I just came back from Nova Scotia in Halifax, and that's <sighs> gorgeous. I definitely want to go back there. Oh my and goodness. uh I started my letterbox at the beginning of the summer. Teresa said or the trails committee set up a beautiful letterbox um, challenge. And I, with Andy's uh, health, you know, we haven't really been doing much and he's finally getting his health back. And so I feel good about leaving. And I, um, I like that Teresa challenge. You did a good job. Good. But I'm only halfway through. So I got a lot more to do. I hear, I hear the pyramid box may be missing. I just got a notice on that. Uh, no, go check it out. No, actually I just found it. The pyram- go ahead. Pyramid. You know what? You share your news. I'm going to run down and see if it's, is there more than one on that trail? There's one for Nickeldale and there's one for Pyramane. Yeah, no, the Pyramane, I just, let me, uh, go ahead. You guys talk. I'll be back. (laughs) (laughs) Bill, you share. Uh, Bill, you are next in my box uh, rotation. Oh, okay. Actually, um, last Thursday, I flew out of LaGuardia. Has anybody else been through LaGuardia? It's amazing. How do you like the, how do you like the new facade on that airport? Oh, is that right? You had something to do with your company, or uh... yeah, we did the entire facade at the at the well, the Delta Airlines wing, which is the big bulk of it. So, wow, well, the whole thing is, and the, they have a display in the middle of the uh, B concourse, which is like thirty feet high. They have this basically water jets that come out of the roof, and they can spell words. It's it's remarkable. You've got to see it. I actually have a video of it. I'll uh, maybe I'll send it to everybody. Very yeah, the um, as part of the uh, installation, well, as in part of the development construction, they had a dedication component to artwork. And as you know, most airports you travel to in the world, they've got some sort of display of whether it's a Charles Lindbergh type plane or a dinosaurs for their you know uh, Pittsburgh, right? Museum. So um, yeah, they. Uh, it, it, it's gotten some raves as they did the ribbon cutting, but I can tell you, even though they did the ribbon cutting, we're still getting some work done over there. They're a little behind. Well, they, they said it's generally, you won't notice it's not done, but it, you know, they still got a lot of work, but I, I was very impressed. And um, unfortunately I flew out to uh, Pittsburgh to see the West Virginia pit football game. And we came just ever so short to winning, but there were, this um, the attendance at the football game, the two college gave was the most of any sporting event in the history of Pittsburgh. Wow. And the Steelers have been playing there for a long time and it was in the Steelers stadium. So wow. there's something to be said for rivalry football games that oh, we yeah. haven't played wow. yet in 11 years. So I think there's also something to be said for cheaper tickets at a college game than a professional NFL game, too. Well, I gather the aftermarket ticket on these were 160 was the cheapest, so I don't know. Oh. Well, you should try and buy a Bruce Springsteen ticket these days. I think it's wow. over $1,500 right now. I heard. Those are crazy. Holy moly. So here's my – I got it on – is that it, Teresa? Yep. I got it on Friday afternoon. That, that just passed. Huh. I'll have to check it out. The, I think the notice I got was after that, but I'm not sure. Friday. I got it Friday and then um, we had Saturday and then the rain Sunday, Monday. Okay. It was a little challenging to find, though, I have to say. Was you it? know, talking talking about football on some personal note, my husband, Andy, in the University of Massachusetts, 1972, first of all, he broke records that still haven't been broken. And just, wow. one, just one record, one record. <laughs> wow. And 
my and my coworker also broke a record at um, UConn that hasn't been broken, and she's wow. kind of kind of catching up with me in my age. But um, so in '72, they won the national college, the NCAA championship. It was played on TV in the boardwalk of uh, New Jersey. And because it was just such a tumultuous time with Vietnam and blah, 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 they never got their recognition. So this year, the class in 1972 has been invited. They've got a whole three-day weekend up at the U UMass and um, they're getting these rings, these college rings that the college wanted to give to them. So <laughs> they're all much older guys now, but... Um, if the years will do that to you. Yeah, there's people coming from <laughs> Scottsdale, Arizona. They're coming from all over the place. A lot of them remember Andy as well as he remembers some of them. One guy was from Ansonia, ironically. But wow. so so that was exciting for him, his little fame Very to glory. Exciting. Yeah. Nice. And I miss everybody. I was just telling one of my patients tonight when I was leaving work, I said, I'm going to my conservation meeting. And I said, I miss these guys. We've yeah. been together a long time. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah you don't realize. We don't, we don't go to bar 140 after these. I know. Meetings. I miss those French fries. <laughs> yeah, well, bar 140. There's a lot of things missing there right now. Oh, so they had, had a the terrible fire, fire yeah. after they just renovated it too. Oh, it was, really? Oh, oh my God. Joe and Tiff are having, that's terrible. But uh, speaking as a person who dines out a lot, there's a lot of other offerings downtown besides bar 140. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you haven't checked out Chaplin, um, that's a good restaurant. So, yeah, my um, wife, Jim, expensive, yes, right. Uh, right. No, I, I don't. I really don't have anything to comment on. Uh, I can't begin to tell you where I've been or wherever, uh, all over the place. But uh, we'll catch up, I guess, some point. You're enjoying being a grandpa. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Yep, and they're keeping me busy right now. And through the month of September and October, it will. It's going to be going to be busy. So Got to get them out there letterboxing, Jim. Put them on I your don't even know what that is. I don't even know what it is. I'm ashamed to say it, uh, but I don't know what it is. But uh, I'll, that's that's probably a good thing. So we'll, well, try. I, we'll give so it a shot. Someday, it's a little baby, right? Yeah. Huh. You have a little baby, though, Grandpa. Yeah, I have uh, Otis Otis Nelson Tate. I love his uh, name. He's, he's so handsome. A, uh, our newborn in New Hampshire, the uh, cute little guy. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't really know too much about him until they get to be about uh, eighteen months or so. Then I start, to, <laughs> then I start to interact. But before <laughs> that, I uh, I kind of stay away. You're not in the diaper <laughs> chain and that yeah. sort of thing. Get in here. Yeah. Teresa, you're last. Okay. So this is really just for Sherry. Sherry? Yes. You got to log your find. If you found this on on Saturday, that's a, September. The this last person who reported it missing was September 1, and you found it after that. Meaning? Sherry's screen is free. Right. Yeah, so, she's I will, uh, so if she goes out and she logs, well, I did. it will show that the la that person that couldn't find it was wrong because Sherry found it. Oh. So, so she'll think she thinks it's lost because she didn't find it when really it's there. Right. She, she couldn't find it. It's. And if if Sherry reports that it's been found. And it's after the person lost it. Does that person who reported it lost gets informed with a notification that? Uh, no, it's no it doesn't matter. Yeah. But anybody else who's looking in the future will be like, oh, it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. Sherry can also leave a comment like if it was if there was something funny about the clues, you know, like sometimes clues reference a tree that was there and then the tree falls over. So people can oh. say leave a comment. Oh, the, the tree that you reference has fallen over. But, you know, whatever. So oh, yeah. Jim, for, for your benefit, Jim, this kind of you know letterboxing and the, this goes on across the globe. I've got a cousin in Scotland who does this when she goes on hikes. Oh, so well, that's where it started in England, right? Yeah, yeah it's uh, very old. Very if there's old. A, if there's something you wanted to do in a different state, um, it would be relatively easy to do. Oh yeah, that. I've letterboxed in Saratoga. I've letterboxed in Maine. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a good it's a good way sometimes when you go someplace new to find interesting places like 
I'll look at some of the listings and look for an interesting place because if the local people are hiding things in some of their favorite spots. Good to know. Good. Well, with uh, that all done, comment center members, we have uh, nothing further. Um, so um, I guess we uh, we stand adjourned, everybody. Um, actually, before I end, though, uh, you know, we are meeting virtually. And while this does make it easy, you have referenced that, you know, we haven't seen each other. And um, so um, would you be interested in having an in-person meeting? I think we should have a garden soiree. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree. Fall yeah. harvest event, right? Farm right. soiree. We could have it at the farm, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. Have Why you, not? Tom? Have you Why seen not? any of those uh, spotted Friday. lantern flies on a Friday? There you oh. go. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Well, the music is done for the summer, Jim. But oh. uh, the no, the spotted spotted lantern fly, uh, Teresa. We have not seen that on the farm yet. I say yet um, because it has been spotted in, I think it was Lyme, Connecticut now. Oh, closer, uh, closer yeah. than that. I mean, I, I know, I know it's in Greenwich and uh, some other spots I, in Lower Fairfield County. I think like uh, Trumbull or Stratford, something like that. Very close. <laughs> wow. That, very close. Um, we are currently, uh, today they were removing nets from the grapes to, to try and do harvest because with the rain, uh, the, the grapes will swell and then burst. So we're going to have to be pretty heavy into harvest um, the, this week and next week. Things were really advanced because of the warm, dry weather and it really the, the sunny, sunny, sunny days. It's The grapes weren't as big, but the, the bricks count, the sugar count in them was pretty high. So they were ready to harvest. But now with the rain, um, it could swell the grapes and then they would burst. So we're, we're working hard and getting that done. Pumpkins are looking good. They're, um, uh, you know, when you have a long spell, we went five weeks with only about a half inch of rain. Um, and then we got about four, four, about four plus inches with this last storm. But right. once you get over two inches, it's just running off. So, uh, but it's helpful for the Christmas trees because uh, they oh. really needed it. You know, um, I, I was doing some drainage work at Birch Bank uh, yesterday around four and digging into the side of the slope where the, there was some erosion. And there were spots where uh, just a just not even an inch down were still wow. powder dry. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, to have a, a long, gentle, sustained rain, you know, as they call it in Ireland, a soft day, um, that's very helpful to the crop, particularly a spread out crop where we don't have irrigation like our Christmas trees. So there was probably a higher mortality to the baby trees that we transplanted this spring. So we'll have to make up for that, you know, next year, but that really won't be felt by the public until, you know, eight or nine years from now. So, mm -hmm. and then they'll have long forgotten about it unless we have drought after drought. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Right. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we're just getting busy, getting ready to set up for uh, pumpkin season. We've got some great artwork. I guys say that, I mean, uh, Emma, has done artwork with us before, but uh, um, the two ladies who are there, Monica and, and Kat, um, they've, they're out doing themselves. We really got to jump on it early. So focusing on an educational pumpkin experience this year with uh, okay. some uh, stuff around the campus. Good. Yeah. Well, pumpkins must need a lot of water. Uh, pumpkins do need a lot of water, uh, but we were able to uh, put, we, we always would have put down irrigation pipes, you know, they're very mobile when oh. we put them up and stake them in place. So um, they get irrigation. There are some of our squash, um, uh, the, the small uh, specialty stuff that we grow in uh, an area that doesn't have irrigation. And um, what happened with that, even though, um, there was very little moisture. So that turned out to be less pollinated um, plants. Um, the plants that were um, um, going in that direction, they're, they're in a good size. Um, so they weren't competing for the moisture with several pumpkins on the vine, so to speak. Um, yeah. So, but uh, it's, it is, you know, I was at the Home Depot parking lot. I saw they had gotten some of their Halloween pumpkin stuff in, some bales of straw uh, for decorative purposes. And uh, a straw bale, I saw the price tag on it, and this was two weeks ago. Uh, I think it was like 11 
well, we were selling our bales of straw for $7 last year. So um, that's, you know, in the field where we normally do parking and um, you would have Sam Stern come over and, and mow the grass or mow the hay to, to bale it up for his cattle. It's just clover that was burned out maybe four or five inches tall. He's not going to get much uh, roughage off of that. Um, so, I mean, I cut my lawn maybe twice this entire summer. It's just brown as a bone. So, you know, that's, I think if you have horses or cattle, any other livestock that requires forage, um, it's gotten expensive because you got to truck it in from a longer distance. So. Jim, I haven't seen you in quite a while personally, but there are reports that there's a lot less of you. Is there, uh, is that true? Are you uh, slimmed down compared to? Yes, uh, I hope so. Uh, I have, uh, yeah, I. Uh, All right, I take off your shirt. Tried to get in uh, golf shape. Uh, to Good. Get to Tom. Uh, I, I I can confirm that the, those such rumors are true that uh, Jim's physique has uh, slimmed. Uh, I cannot confirm that his golf game has slimmed in the number of strokes. <laughs> well, <laughs> but he'll look more svelte out there on the course. That's important too. That is right. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. He, he hasn't been picked well, we, up by the live tour. Working yet. on it. We're working on it. So well, congratulations. That's Thank good. You. Well, this is the kind of banter that I do miss. So uh, hopefully we can get together in person for our, our, our next time. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. That would be good. All right. Oh, we have, we have we have a nice meeting room in the barn. That's where we're, the trails committee met. It is today. nice. It's really it, nice. It, 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 are you getting your electricity soon, correct? What? They're getting electricity soon. Oh, we have electricity. Oh, we got oh. fantastic it, lights. It, it's luxurious up there. It, absolutely. We got dimmer we, switches on the lights. I mean, it's impressive. It needs pizza. That's all it needs, really. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it, it needs, it's going to need heat pretty soon. Oh, well. Well, in that regard, and looking at the outdoors when it's dark, uh, I think, you know, next month might be, you know, one of the last hurrah chances for that. So maybe yeah. that's what we'll aim for. Yeah. And yeah. if I have to adjust the meeting time a little bit, we'll poll everybody and see if they can yeah. meet a little bit earlier so we can have yeah. some daylight. So. Why not? All right, folks. Uh, with that, all of our stuff on our agenda accomplished, uh, 